आइए प्लीज कम गुड गुड आफ्टरनून प्लीज सेट डाउन सो आर यू स्टेइंग नियर बाय और यू आर कमिंग फ्रॉम आई एम स्टेइंग नियर बाय नियर बाय आई अराइव्ड इन दिल्ली ओनली टू डेज बैक टू डेज बैक बट वेयर इज योर होम इट्स इन सिलीगुड़ी मैं सिलीगुड़ी वाओ नाइस प्लेस सो यू आर अ इंजीनियर यू आर अ बिग टेक सो टेल मी अबाउट रेन फेड एग्रीकल्चर इन इंडिया वी हैव द मेजॉरिटी एरियाज वी हैव रेन फेड एग्रीकल्चर बिकॉज़ वी आर शॉर्ट ऑफ वाटर so do you understand anything or you don't yes ma'am you do okay around 65% of our uh, agriculture is rain fed mm. because there is uh, like you said lack of uh, water uh, water yeah so uh, it 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 makes our uh, agriculture a little vulnerable as well yeah. where we have to depend on the vagaries of uh, the climate and given climate change uh, this has been an issue we are look, uh, trying to go forward towards climate smart agriculture right so uh, there are these aquifers you know about aquifers underground yes. water yes. belt or bed or whatever you call it so there also we are falling short of water you know if there's a runoff after the rain yes, you ma'am. use something and then it runs off into the uh, underground so there also we are having problems so how do we resolve this how do we improve our water management let us say uh ma'am uh, one way is to increase the way or make it more efficient to mm. recharge these aquifers how do we do it uh, that's the question yes, um so aquifer management can be done by creating specific structures i'm mm. not aware of the exact uh, ponds pot yeah um, whatever potholes whatever yeah, so collect the water uh, collect the water ma'am yeah. another way could mm. be to move towards a system of virtual water trade Mm-hmm. where uh, we look at uh, items that we export or import not only in terms of the economic cost but in terms of the amount of water that it takes rain use uh. yes ma'am so if, for example have you heard of rain fed agriculture i'm sorry this uh, rain harvesting rain water harvesting uh, rain water harvesting so what is that we could perhaps use that also yes ma'am mm-hmm. uh, so uh, structures to collect the rain water and divert it towards the aquifers mm. is uh, rain fed uh, is water harvesting and right. that can be done in uh, domestic areas also where mm. we stay for example it's being done in chennai mm. it's uh, what do they do so uh, the bylaws of the area they mandate that uh, the building should have uh, rain water collection areas and mm. both storage tanks as well as part of it can go down to the ground water recharge it's being d- d- done in siliguri also So in your place in my place <laughs> and they can also you know use that water when the rain has gone then they can use that water for the little you know <laughs> the birds and the animals that water which they have collected they can use for the household so animals can come and feed up yeah they can also have yeah thirsty uh, yeah of course and the uh, birds can also hang around and do some you know drinking water perhaps Okay, doesn't matter. In a way, it it increases the biodiversity of the yeah, area. Yeah, of course. Ecosystem services, yes, ma'am. Let tell me about the fertilizer subsidy. The they are saying that we'll raise it to forty thousand crores. They have announced it already. The government. So why such a huge amount on subsidy? Ma'am, I'm not aware of the exact reason, but mm-hmm. I think uh, it has something to do with the petroleum prices. petrol okay because the prices are going up so uh, the cost of creating those fertilizers will go up for example india is one of the large in fact the largest uh, importer of uh, diammonium phosphate okay and that's in short supply these days so the government has to resort to higher subsidies to and that's why they have announced it right uh, that would be my guess ma'am that's all right it doesn't matter tell me there's a seed i have some seeds and i put it on the ground and i just hide it up like right. i bury them and then what happens to the seed to the seed yes the i mean technically speaking the outer covering ruptures and uh, shoot yeah. develops it germinates is what yeah, it germinates and because of some water and some oxygen or something there is a so, so the photosynthesis yes uh, that photosynthesis will come later when it comes out abhi to so it's under the ground yes. right and it's trying to germinate and push out when it comes out then the, the leaves, leaves come and the photosynthesis the photosynthesis is related to leaves as you said right right sir please
Hang on. Okay. Which is Patun? Ah. So, tell me uh, what all is meant by your name, Abhijit. Uh, Abhijit. Uh, one meaning is that a person who is victorious. Hmm. But uh, when my parents named me, they named me because I, I mean, Abhijit or is the Sanskrit word for the star Vega of the constellation Lyra. And this star was the pole star around ten thousand years ago. So that that's the vision behind me. Mm -hmm. It's considered to be one of those very uh, uh, auspicious nakshatras. Uh, 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 I'm not aware of the nakshatra mm -hmm. parts. Mm -hmm. Like that is the constellation. That's uh, the the Vega constellation. Yes, sir. constellation. The Lyra yeah. constellation. Yes, so people say that if you wish to do some work. Do it in Abhijit Nakshatra, then you need not ask the Panditji. I can mm -hmm. straight away go ahead and do it. But uh, you rightly said Abhijit means who is unwinnable. You can't win. You know what that means. I think it's more about one who is victorious, sir. Oh, is it so? Yes, sir. That that's what I, my parents are. Mm hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose we want to handle the Sri Lankan crisis to our advantage. And my proposition to you is, we go and spread the word that your association with China is at the rock, at the root of your all your troubles. What are various things we can tell to Sri Lanka in this respect? Uh, so we point. want to link the present crisis of Sri Lanka, what it is into the soup, what it is mm -hmm. with, with Chinese to association with China, and, and what are the things you can think of? Take time. Think and tell me. Complete. So the question is, uh, what should we say to Sri Lanka mm -hmm. so that we can link? Or I mean, is it a hard to blame China? Right. Tell that since you got yourself associated with China, so this is what the soup you are in. Some connection. Uh, sir, I beg to differ in mm -hmm. the approach uh, of uh, direct. No, no, approach is it's a, one is not questioning the approach. Right. Questioning the methodology. You see. You see, as a bureaucrat, we do discuss what is the best approach. But having got a particular line of approach, then we find out how best we go ahead. Right. So I think uh, to impress upon them that it's indirectly impress upon them that it's the Chinese thing. Directly, indirectly, whatever. Uh, sir, I think we can uh, two three points which you can say in favor of. We can uh, announce more development projects for them and mm -hmm. do it in time. Mm -hmm. So and without a sense of debt trap diplomacy that goes on in the Chinese side, mm -hmm. that could be an indirect message to them that look, mm -hmm. we are the people who will eventually help you out mm -hmm. without any negative repercussion. Mm -hmm. uh, you will not refer to the balance of payment with China between China and uh, Sri Lanka. It's it's uh, heavily against uh, Sri Lanka. I mm -hmm. think so. so uh, Sri Lanka uh, imports most of their things even from India. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm I'm zeroing in into China only. I'm not talking about it. I want your way of handling it as a bureaucrat. One line of action I said about the balance of payment. Anything else which can be amplified to the advantage? Sir, oil imports probably. Okay, I am not sure. Nepal has issued some orders uh, relating uh, to fiscal management mm -hmm. so that they don't fall into the Sri Lanka type of crisis. Yes, sir. What are those orders? So they have uh, created a list of items that mm -hmm. they want to stop from importing, mm -hmm. uh, non-essential items. So they have identified that if uh, basically they want to conserve their forex. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the reasons why uh, Sri Lanka has gone into this crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the basic uh, thing that they have done. They, they are banning imports. For See, a, a I understand period. that uh, Russia or some country wants to link their currency with gold straight away to the price of gold in the international market. Do you think it's a good move? Suppose Indian currency, we also to make it stable, I will link it to the gold. That rupees hundred, uh, this many grams or micrograms of gold. Primarily, I think nations do that to reduce volatility. Mm -hmm. uh, I think ruble was falling earlier, mm -hmm. but 
it it has regained much of its uh, uh, glory uh, mm -hmm. pre the invasion mm -hmm. uh, because uh, europe is still dependent on uh, uh, russia for uh, for its natural gas imports and energy imports so sir i i i don't think that it's sustainable to uh, or or it's required mm -hmm. to link it to gold for presently indian uh, currency is linked to what for the international price of indian currency Sir, it's it's sovereign back, so not sure if it's left. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Abhijit, you are fond of composing poems also. Yes, sir. I would like to learn from you. There are very, very illustrious poets of Bengal, but not very well known today. Have you heard of Michael Madhusudan Dutt? Yes, sir. Have you read Michael Madhusudan Dutt? I have, but a long time back. In, in Do you be able to recall? No, sir. And Taru Dutt? No, sir. I don't recall this. Have you heard of Savitri composed by Tarudat? No, sir. Well, what tragedy that you are a poet and then uh, this is what I said, lesser known poets of Bengal. Okay, which poet of Bengal, apart from Rabindranath Tagore, fascinates you the most? Uh, Mohashata Devi, actually, mm -hmm. because I, anthropology is my optional and she has written poems on uh, the tribal problems. So, I have read some of them and uh, that she's the one. She's the one. She fascinates you the most. And uh, what is poignant about uh, Mahashweta Devi? Sorry, uh, sir, what what is poignant about her writing? Uh, I think it's the image. It's it's the imagery, sir, that mm -hmm. she uses. For example, uh, she she wrote about the Munda uh, and, and their uh, Munda tribe and their uh, issues. She connected the problem to a uh, pickle that as the sickle goes inside the ground because mundas uh, earlier what they used to do they did not have agriculture they believe that agriculture is uh, is, is is like you are putting a sickle and uh, hurting the ground mm -hmm. so the way that was done she compared that to how the government development policies have uh, put a sickle into their way of life abhijit i take you back to even earlier days swami vivekananda what do you think is Swami Vivekananda's contribution to India's freedom struggle and enhancement of self-esteem of India? So he lived at a time when uh, the youth of the country was uh, lacking in confidence. So one of his primary uh, contributions is uh, infusion of confidence into the youth. He did that by traveling around the country, around Bengal particularly, and talking to the people. Also, he took the Indian ideals of religion and tolerance to the West. For example, his famous speech at, speech at Chicago. And sir, what is unique about the Chicago address? Uh, the what first, is unique? The first thing is he started with good morning brothers and sisters rather than brothers and sisters or sisters and brothers. I am not sure, sir. It, it mm. probably was. Go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, and, and also he was the founder of the Ramakrishna Mission, which uh, not only was a revivalist uh, religious organization, but also did a lot of uh, social welfare. These are the contributions that I can think of. Anything else apart from that? Any? He was a good writer, uh, but uh, I am not sure if that's what you are looking for. Mm -hmm. What I am not looking for, what is his contribution? So, uh, mm -hmm. These are the ones that I can recall. What you can recall, yes, the difference is what I am looking for and what his contribution is. Okay, now we come to name five Bengali freedom fighters. Freedom fighters, there is no doubt of freedom fighters from Bengal. Name five. Surendran Banerjee. Um, okay. Sir, uh, Subhash Chandra, Subhash Chandra Bose. Pamela Devi Chattopatai. Give me the punchline of Netaji Subhash and Bose. Delhi Chalo. And uh, give me blood and I will give you freedom. Hmm. Good. Now we come down to the present day. Bengal, you must have heard of Naxal Bari. Why is it uh, well known? Because the Maoist uh, uh, movement or the peasant based Maoist movement started from Naxal Bari. Can you tell me the date and how it began? The first incident in Naxalwadi? 
it was in 1960 after 1965 1967 probably not sure probably. it began not because of uh, a direct uh, maoist link it began because uh, i think of a share crop or not giving enough uh, share crop to the uh, cultivators being forced to give uh, a large amount of their produce to the share crop but to the uh, temporary tenants and the peasants they revolted that's how it started and there was a lot of uh, female uh, uh, agriculturists who were involved in that is how it started okay now my last question you are yes. work you are, were working or you are working in the texas instruments yes i was you were and you worked for a good 4 years you know now tell me if there is demotivation in the workforce there at texas yes if there is demotivation what action and efforts will you make to ensure optimum level of motivation so the first thing that i would do is try to identify why the demotivation is happening for example we because of the uh, work from home culture there is a in fact there is actually a lot of demotivated people in the workforce uh, so once i identify that uh, i think targeted intervention for example uh, having more fun events in 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 uh, as part of the work day and in fact i know that texas instruments is trying to move towards a four day week rather than a five day week so that could be one reason and that's a very i would say very effective boost to motivation also sir uh, uh, bringing in uh, outside uh, uh, cultural events that can happen in texas instruments that has been do- going on and that should be increased to increase motivation and has it made any difference it has sir the mm-hmm. uh, texas instruments has one of the lowest attrition rates uh, among the companies thank you sir thank you sir rafan sir no problem yes have you heard of arabari experiment in west bengal sir i have heard of the name i'm not able to place it sir i have heard of the so name this laid the foundation of a very important to say uh, developmental governance not able to okay no problem no only the president of india made one remarks in one of during his one of his visits that there are a lot of things to be learned from tribal society so what are two three things which you think the general population can learn from tribal society Uh, so the first thing is the concept of uh, what we call the uh, nature man spirit complex yeah, there what else okay um the second thing is uh, mm-hmm. sir they have a very uh, they have a much better uh, uh, sex ratio in terms of uh, so say male to female and and that is because their respect for women and the position that women hold in the society is much higher these are the two things i think that primarily we can learn what is the mechanism used by government of india canalizing developmental funds to tribal tribal tribes the mechanism is varied based on the population for example for most of the country it's uh, based on tribal supply and uh, for pvtgs it's uh, targeted what is the sdg goal for energy energy sector and uh, is there any scheme of government of india which is specifically aligned with this objective uh, so uh, recently we enhanced our energy goals panchamrit uh, principles so one of that is we want to go carbon neutral by 2070 as well as 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030 and uh, i think 50% from non fossil fuel based energy by 2030 uh, so the government has a specific program called uh, national action plan for uh, nfcc national action plan for climate change national adaptation plan for climate particularly for energy sector power sector um for uh, from the renewable purposes no general scheme uh when we say the object, the goal un- under sdg is the energy for all green and reliable energy for all so uh, recently we have the green hydrogen mission mm-hmm. one then uh, to so, so bhagya scheme so bhagya scheme is for the yes sir yes sir it, it's for the last mile yes, connectivity for everyone I mean, yes sir for everyone reach, every house every, every house okay. every household sir 
and we also have the uh, uh, Uday scheme to increase the health of the discoms. Last week, uh, Honorable Minister of Road and Surface Transport made a comment about ethanol. Are you aware? That's Not a specific comment. No problem. Now, it is said that justice delayed is justice denied. Right. There are more than four crore cases pending in the Right. Just tell me three steps, which of course Government of India is already taking, which you would like them to be expedited. Which are those three steps? The digitization as much as possible of the uh, court mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second step would be bringing in artificial intelligence or more intelligence in scheduling of the cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third would be like what you, Britain has done uh, with the Crown Court management system. You are giving a part of the at least the administrative uh, workload to a separate body, the Crown Court management mm -hmm. system. That will reduce the uh, uh, the workload of the actual court. So that uh, and and of course uh, bringing in more judges would be the final. So giving this job to a parallel to some other agency means can, can we say you you it is that uh, alternative uh, to redress area mm, so i would beg to i would not call this alternative dispute resolution because we are giving the job of the administration of the courts mm -hmm. the administrative work of the courts mm -hmm. to a separate body yep. okay yes right mm -hmm. so my last question yes your hobby you have mentioned recreational cycling. Yes. What is this recreational cycling? Uh, so it's opposed to utility cycling, where uh, utility cycling, uh, yeah. where uh, you cycle, keeping a specific goal in mind. For example, shopping or going to work. I started out with utility cycling, but it's come down to recreational because I am at home these days and I do it specifically just to pass time with friends. So okay. that's recreational okay. cycling. Right. Thank you, sir. So, Abhijit, uh, do you think that this Doklam conflict was uh, primarily aimed by China to uh, to make an inroads into the Trinidad corridor? That's one of the reasons that I have read in the news that it was. I would also say that. Uh, it was sort of to send a message to India or to Bhutan rather that uh, India may not be the best person to protect you in terms when uh, we, that is China, want to do some mischief with uh, our disputed territory. But it, it, uh, it wasn't that successful from a Chinese perspective. But yes, the strategic goal would be to have a better field view of the chicken neck area. Because the Doklam corridor is at an elevated position and uh, chicken neck is directly visible from. Yes. How has India uh, they, uh, reinforced itself in this uh, area? Who's that? Sir, I am uh, I'm not uh, able to recall the exact steps, but uh, all I can say is that it wasn't a success from a Chinese perspective, whatever they wanted. But the threat remains. Uh, the threat, of course, remains, sir, because uh, China has a two front uh, a, a plan. Abhijit, you are an electrical engineer. Now, I'll take you to the energy situation. My statement is that uh, the Ukraine war has made India more energy insecure. Can you discuss this from your point of view? Yes, sir. Uh, to to agree to this statement, I would say that it obviously the oil prices have gone up. It's around 140 dollars a barrel from 40 dollars a barrel. So uh, and and we import around 70 percent of our oil. So in a way, it has made us energy insecure as well. But India has always kept its diplomatic doors open, and we have been able to import cheap uh, oil as well. I would also say that uh, this is also an opportunity in disguise in the sense that uh, given that uh, the oil prices have gone up, it can be an indirect push for people to or the government to push for more uh, electric vehicles. Uh, but to answer your question or, and to sum up, uh, it has uh, made the so country… So, the present power crisis arising of this coal shortage yes, sir. primarily, yes. 
do you think this is also a fallout of the ukraine war or is it an internal problem sir it's uh, i'm not able to connect it to the ukraine war as per se but uh, there are various reasons why this coal shortage came up firstly the heat uh, there is huge demand uh, because of the heat waves and secondly the rakes or the trains that are used to transport this coal that is not enough that has been said in the news also post covid the industries have opened up and the supply is not able to keep up with the demand so on balance i would say it's more of an internal problem uh, but uh, since we import coal and uh, since other nations also are not able to get uh, their energy security from russia they are importing coal as well so the import of coal that comes to india is under stress so indirectly it's also a effect of uh, russia ukraine but more okay, more, so more it's uh, a domestic problem so abhijit you just now mentioned about heat wave yes now you are the district magistrate west bengal or whichever place where there is a massive heat wave unprecedented how would you take care of your people in the district tell me steps so the immediate step would be to look at this from a most vulnerable perspective the most vulnerable people are the people who do not have a place above their heads so the administration should try to create temporary structures so that these people can at least get shade and uh, some water and ors and all these things can be applied some bananas and everything and the second step and and in parallel we should also be very steadfast in uh, <laughs> increasing our awareness uh, through media through social media social media channels can be open for this uh, but in the long term sir i would uh, i would try to look at this from a zone perspective i would want to have a map where i can see which are the zones of the district which are most vulnerable and create a road plan or a road map for the long term thing so that if it happens in the future we are better prepared the last question yes we have seen communal clashes arising out of religious processions up has attempted some sop or you know giving permissions as and when the you know somebody comes to the administration now tell me what is your take like how would you tackle uh, if somebody uh, wants to take a religious procession what would be the process that you would adopt number 1 to consider whether he should be allowed to uh, take the procession at all and if yes if to allow what precautions are you going to take to see that no untoward incident happen have you understood my question yes i have sir so uh, in terms of uh, deciding whether the procession should be allowed or not i think uh, it's important for the people who want a procession to proactively declare i think that's part of the rules today as well that you need to give uh, you need to ask permission from the police and what the authorities do is they see the route that is being taken whether it's going to a vulnerable section of the community or whether clashes can happen you, we can predict so you it. tell them that this route is not acceptable right and they say no we will take it from this route Yeah, there is a there is a conflict on this point and this is a whatever you do we are going to take the procession by this route what would you i would i would tell them that uh, okay if that's the case i would tell them that uh, let's have the re- uh, leader of the community from where this procession passes i would have them in my office and have the people of that community who want to take out the procession in my office i would make them sit down and have a recorded video and send it out on social media saying that we want religious peace or we want uh, communal harmony and we have no objection of uh, a procession yes. coming through this route and i want to send it out to all the people of the locality so that they know beforehand that oh, the religious you people are in to the request i would accede with caution and with some precautions sir because uh, at the end of the day as an administrator i would want to respect the people's uh, wishes as much as possible but i would take the precautions of uh, having that video out so you have taken precautions and this you have allowed the route which initially you did not prescribe the procession happens and a communal clash happens right now what will be your responsibility on that i would again 
I mean, this is not something that only the authorities should be involved in solving. We would need the people and representatives of both the communities in place. And we would try to discuss and come out with an amicable solution and whatever. Uh, uh, I, I think the most important thing is to send a message out to the people that... Uh, no, the most important thing is to avoid a clash. But I'll be very frank, Vijit, you are going to be the DM. Right. Not in bringing a reform, you are bringing communal peace. You would not ever allow anything to happen. The policing that in that first. region, yes, sir. you can't do experiments. Policing in that region as an immediate step should be increased, definitely. But to prevent future clashes from happening, I think a message to the people should go out. Thank you, Abhiji. Thank you, sir. So, Abhiji, how do you rate yourself? How do you think you did? I don't think I did very well, ma'am. You don't think so? No. Achha, where did you go wrong, you thought? Some of the answers, specifically Sir's answers, uh, I could have come out with a more uh, pragmatic answer, I believe. For example, the last question that you asked. So, what do you think now should have been your answer? <laughs> I believe you should have agreed with me. Right, sir. But internally, are you feeling that you went the wrong path? Yes, because I did not uh, look at the short-term short -term solution. I just went for the broad idealistic solution first. I should have looked at immediately what I should do and then when things are more rosy, I should look for so, Abhijit, you have to be decisive. So, yes. I will brief you further. Let the chairperson complete. Yeah, I was saying that you are a very good personality. You impress, right? Thank and you, you have a good smile, which is very catchy. You can dialogue also and you can take the pros and cons. But maybe in some areas, maybe you got confused or he was asking you some particular thing and you got carried away. Yes. But that you have already told him, you can tell him further. So on the whole, we rate you very well. We rate you at 68%. 6 and 8, 68%. 186, okay, sir. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Very good. Haan, sir. But thank you. So, your name tallies with the Nobel laureate. Hmm. You can draw some inspiration and find out about some energy in it. <laughs> Great guy. So, you are cool, composed, and quite passionate about answering questions. I am happy about that. Thank you, sir. Uh, sometimes the entire dialogue becomes monotone. It goes on and on in one tune. It doesn't change. In terms of the voice you are saying, sir? Uh, dialogue delivery. It's uh, a monotone. It doesn't change with the uh, topic. So, depending on different topics, something is closer to your heart. The tone will be different. If it is slightly away. Even I felt that, sir. Yes, sir. So, so that if there is a variation, Yes. It brings some liveliness in the conversation. Yes, yes. I put it as a conversation with the board, not a question answer session with the board. Conversations bring more mark as compared to uh, what you call question answer sessions. And uh, otherwise, I find you are quite good and uh, keep it up. Uh, about uh, your town, Siliguri. Siliguri. Yes. I doubt about them. Okay. I think it's a gateway to uh, Sikkim. It's a gateway to the entire northeast is called, sir. Ah, that's correct. Chicken's in night. fact, there is a night. town called Jalpai Gudi. Uh -huh. The district is somewhere there only. In the entire district, sir. Ah. Yes. So, I was uh, uh, trying to find out that uh, what the name suggests, what is the meaning of that name? Jalpai Gudi. Jalpai is name of a fruit. So, it's based on that. That yeah. fruit is grown there a lot. Correct. All around you find that the Jalpai is the uh, Jalpai Gach, Jalpai tree. Yes, it's not Jalpai. In Bengali, we have a word Jalpai. 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 Like Abhijit is a Obijit. Ah, yes. Obhijit. So, is there, not Pur. Pur is not there, Pur. Okay. Then, secondly, uh, this Naxalism hmm. has some link to that area. Right, sir. So, keep it in your mind what links are there to the old. Uh, uh, Naxalism. Mm -hmm. These days, Naxalism is no longer there. It is somewhere else. Uh, some people are more worried about uh, left-wing extremism in some other area, some right. corridor or not. 
conducted the perception it was around that time yes naxal wadi so yeah. may i may i ask uh, what you meant exactly by that question of uh, uh, what india should do in china or i i couldn't still oh, get that question you see uh, you see uh, your second of uh, choice of subjects so uh, i guess yes. is ifs so as a diplomat we have to carry out what is in our national interest right my national interest with respect to china uh, with respect to sri lanka is that i throw out china from sri lanka and enter there i uh, attain supremacy as compared to china so the question was how should we attain what no. india should do uh, question is how do i to uh, put china in uh, bad books of sri lanka right. so that was they are in the bad book and everybody comes to know that they are in the bad book and what could be that one step that we should do to put them in the bad book one policy of china is to give loan uh, at a the what they call very freely they are distributing loan yes, all over right sir okay you make this you make that uh, the loan is available go ahead but at the back of that the chinese companies are coming the chinese uh, administration is coming and uh, practically if uh, uh, you don't pay we take over right debt and diplomacy <laughs> so that sort of thing if it is uh, pointed out then somebody will buy our argument why not and india can go and point that out specifically i mean how will it works i'm i'm subtle not... there is a subtle way of doing things right so sir. lot of things can be done in a subtle way right sir. you see in assam the uh, ulfa was at one time supreme it was reigning reigning everywhere nobody could talk against ulfa so we arranged in a way that uh, some after uh, is still there then ulfa became irrelevant and uh, people say oh the ulfa yeah, we don't want to hear about so from a being a thing where it should be worship it was worth worshiping ulfa from there it became such a it became a non issue <laughs> then in a very subtle way So subtle politics, subtle uh, diplomacy, can have its own way. But then one has to think about. It. Bluntly, you cannot go and announce over the loudspeaker various things. So this is one thing which we have an opportunity in Sri Lanka. Great opportunity. It's a very nice question, sir. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. sir. Very good, Abhijit the Invincible. <laughs> okay. Now you come down to brass tacks. Brass tacks means. Please take pains to understand about Tarudat and Michael Madhusudan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two. Also, the origin of Naxalism and why Naxal body? Why Naxal body? <coughs> right. And Swami Vivekanand. You are one would expect you to be an encyclopedia of Swami Vivekanand and uh, Ramakrishna Paramhans. Go a little more deep into that portion of knowledge and spirituality. Okay. Chirag tale and dehra, as they say. <laughs> hmm? Darkness below the candle. Be the light. that you are expected to be as a son of bengal one and two the general awareness also about matters pertaining to law and order whether ed and the cbi have become instruments of the center or not these topics are likely to come during the course of the final interview to absolute clean shave on the day of the interview yes. no stubble it's good to have a crew cut but a well maintained crew cut not scruffy crew cut right okay all the best thank you sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, Abhijit, I agree with what has been said already. You are a very good candidate. Thank you. Your body language, very pleasant personality, confident. Just one or two small points from my side. One that you want, know, one or at least one opinion you use the phrase "I beg to differ." Yes. That you can avoid. So, what would be a better? You can say, sir, in my opinion, why to why okay. to begin your sentence with this "I beg to differ"? Well, I say something. So, sir, sir, in my opinion, it is like. Yes, sir. that would be better. Okay, or even uh, like if I am asking for opinion, then you should say in my opinion. Otherwise, you can say, sir, I I think it is like this, and you can avoid the word even opinion. Okay. Second is your movement was a little on the excessive side. You see the video, what I am trying to say. Your 
overall body movement your hand movement movement almost touch uh, touch to the level of informally uh, kind of discussions yes rather than a for a view of the highest order in the that you, that thing you could have always struggled with yes otherwise you are a very good candidate thank you smiling face confident well informed all the best for us thank you sir. so abhijit uh, you have excellent personality a uh, little bit which will further improve your overall persona during the interview when of course he has mentioned you were most of the time bending forward and it's like is it a part of your habit or is it uh, uh, by chance this is one of the first interviews that i've sat oh okay. so so yeah. abhijit very good we thought as much you must sit back try to sit absolutely when you bend down and start you know it took the dip you know you're having coffee with your friends mm -hmm. and discussing on some you know very important you know adult talk intellectual talk but some informality comes yes sir so you can as well answer like this you are sitting like this it will be very good thank you and reiterate what he has mentioned i beg to differ should not be your first uh, response line for two reasons one that differing you know may 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 irritate the panel back to differ now you may be begging but you are differing all right so it's slightly you know a bit uh, attacking kind of statement more than that it may be detrimental to you now what happens is it happens with everyone whenever a question is placed before you you keep thinking also as to what my stand like it happened in the question the last question the problem is that the moment you started the answer you said i beg to you have already begged to differ now on the the way when you are answering the question you your mind says you know i think i have taken a very tough stand right in the beginning i cannot come back which happened in your third question last yes, sir question. absolutely so opinion is is not disagreeing right to so start with sir uh, uh, my in my opinion uh, the this is how you know it should happen and then whatever is the nature of the question you also pick up some something if it is unlawful something which has to be uh, you know condemned then of course you will not partly also agree to that but in certain questions most of the questions you may have to take a balanced view when i i can give an instance but uh, have you understood what i mean yes sir so I there's, a, there's a for example for example uh, prohibition in uh, bihar like a prohibition what do you think uh, liquor prohibition has been totally you know useless because it is badly implemented and it has led to clogging of uh, jails and all so i in my opinion sir liquor prohibition has been a good step because you know it has reduced the crime it has done this it has done that. uh yeah it is true that the implementation may have been a bit uh, you know shabby but uh, if that can be improved you know it will have you know double overall good impact. overall good good uh, thing that's it so you did not have to say i beg to that is one now coming back to the hand movement also of course i have also mentioned the same thing that don't like this pose is okay at times you can keep your hand like that but don't try to i know it gives you confidence yes yes sir when singers sing you know they move their hand just not not something that uh, it is it is a it is by design it is they give they get more possible but for 30 minutes in the interview you should avoid what to unki roj kya this daily and lastly i would like to mention that when it came to information you are very well informed thank you when it came to information you were excellent but when it came to situations mm -hmm. and your views yes you became shaky now that is something which 
the first part that i mentioned that information was good shows your mental, <laughs> mental alertness yeah. about your person <laughs> that yes i know that doctor mom so i know china bhutan this that so i am aware of what is happening in the world but the second thing about your view or indecisiveness that reflects another part of your personality you know when it comes to decision making he will look here and there he will either submit because you are mentioning that i will go by their route it did not find the route good it may lead to communal clash but they pressed and you agreed that's what so it yeah. showed the signs of submission at your level like if you had said sir i will make them agree to the route i'll explain to them why it is so but i may not agree because it may lead to communal at no cost preventing a communal clash is more important than taking out the position can you say sir i will not allow look at the up government what they have issued the directive they mentioned i want to give permission i want an affidavit from the organizers that nothing will happen and in case something happens they will so the very fact that when you said that i will give approval procedure would be there that means you can disapprove also right the heavens are not going to fall if you refuse because ultimately the communal harmony is more important to your district right. so one is that you were you submitted and number two you were indecisive you know you could not decide so these are the things which you should avoid right am i clear thank you very much okay abhijit do well i told you the percentage yes ma'am ha uh, so fair enough keep build it up go to 72 or something this is a good percentage uh, very good i think so. 68 is uh, you know it will be maybe out of the total candidates it should be around uh, 2 to 3 percent people get 68 and above thank you sir it is very few and then about 50 yeah, maybe 95 190 yes he got and then we are somewhere in the sir ne bola for every issue coming out of your tax make some possible questions that which can be asked and your views we did not ask you much about from the bengal government so that would also be very important uh, your silly goody yeah. i did ask something your electro electronics and electrical there can be you know at least a dozen <coughs> questions yes sir in the present context yes i mean there can be 100 questions but the panel would like to ask you something which everyone has read Or not that i have read somewhere you know and i'll secretly ask you okay abhi ji tell me this sir you have read something i haven't read anything which has come in the new paper which is talk of the town talk of the nation i would say from there if it is related to suppose for example 5g yeah say for example this semiconductor conference is happening i'm just giving an example you're supposed to know about it and they can ask you how how india is doing its semiconductor what are the issues so pick up those questions and make your views also yes sir that will help Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Do well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.